our next speaker is, in fact, I believe, a Swedish psychologist, experienced designer and LARP. No, hang on. You know what? You, your, your LARP venue flooding out, you may think that some of you knowingly laughed, hollowly. <laughs> yes, the, 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 that's a sign to you on the internet, for instance, who may not know. This is something that happens now. Uh, it is something that is even relatively likely to happen now. And I think that's going to be the rest of our lives, which is a horrible thought. But like, oh, like you didn't have enough to worry about. Now venues flooding or forest fires or these kinds of things are also increasingly common. <sighs> okay, which means that we're going to need the Swedish psychologist clearly to get through this. Yes, our next speaker <laughs> is a Swedish psychologist, experienced designer and LARPer. Uh, since the world and uh, this uh, LARP community has been through a lot lately, she is here to talk about how we can slow down. Please welcome Frida Lindegren. I think we actually have a theme, mm -hmm. probably, for Knutpunkt 2022. I think we are tired. I think we really need to slow down. So I'm going to talk about how. So these last three years, I worked with rehabilitations for patients who suffer from severe exhaustion. And I've seen how bad it can get when you push on, like you talked about in the last piece. And how you hope that it will get better just if you just push through to the next deadline, if you just make it, then it will be fine. And it's never doing that. And when you hope and you push and you push and you push, it can get really, really bad. And I've seen it. And most people I meet got sick due to a series of musts and have tos, which piled on and eventually became too much. But there was a small but significant group who differed a bit from this. People who asked me how on earth they could be stressed because they loved what they do. But when do you rest? I typically ask. I don't, they said. I don't want to, I'm having too much fun. And that's the problem. <laughs> In 2017, Siri Sankrist talked about the Swedish word pep, the feeling of happiness and passion, and how meaningful and important it is for this community, and also LARP in general. And I agree wholeheartedly. We need pep to survive, but we can't live on pep alone. Our bodies typically work best when, it, when, when we alternate between activity and inactivity. To do something fun and meaningful often means you're being quite active, physically and or mentally. It usually also means you can't really feel how tired you are. Quite opposite, we usually feel more energized. And we are generally really bad at knowing how tired we are while we are active. So and sometimes we theoretically know we're going to crash as soon as we sit down. So we keep up the high energy. And this is no problem if we do it for short periods of time. And if we get enough rest afterwards. It is not a good strategy in the long run. Because it helps to run a game which is understaffed. But the volunteers might burn out. And the organizers too. It helps to create massive quantities of play, but probably for a shorter duration than planned. This is my two-year-old. He's learned e me. He's taught me everything about how to play and relax at the same time. <laughs> so we, as people, need breaks to stay healthy. We need breaks to stay safe and sane. And we need breaks to keep up the quality of our work. Because the more tired you are, the more your brain shuts down. Typically, the regions working with social competence, problem solving, and analyzing new information. 
which we really need when LARPing. So we have to ensure we get rest before, during and after we do stuff. It doesn't always have to be like a week's rest or a 30 minute nap. It can just be a few seconds of slow breathing. It counts. But how can we make room for this in play? To take care of ourselves, but also to create interesting characters, we need to figure out more about our characters than what makes them break. What are the soft, softer, more gentle sides of the people we portray? What makes them relaxed? What do they do to wind down? How do they take a break that makes sense in this time and place they're in? Do your character go for long walks? Do you grumpily drink a co for coffee by themselves at breakfast? Do you quietly cuddle with one of your loved ones? Maybe they don't need to storm off every time for you to make a point about their relationship to another. Maybe they just need to take a deep breath and quietly zoom out from the conversation. And it takes courage to take center stage, but it also takes courage to stand back, to stand still and give yourself, your character and the LARP some time. This is the most awesome chair I've sat in. It's incredible. I worked at a preschool once where they had a big room with all kinds of classic activities like the reading corner or make stuff with clay corner. And they also had a thinking chair. This was not a chair. This is another chair. Uh, a child could go to that chair to sit down without being bothered for as long as they liked. The purpose of that chair was to sit down and think about what they would like to do next. It gave a solution to the restless wandering of someone who lacks direction and gave opportunity for rest and contemplation. So I want to say the design of the location will affect the possibilities for rest. Do you have enough comfy chairs? How's the acoustics? Is there a space where you can lie down for a nap without going off game? Is there a place where people can feel relaxed and badass at the same time? In my and Anna Karin Linde's scenario by the foot of Yggdrasil, some of the characters were goddesses who laid in a huge bed all the time. One of the players were pregnant and took the opportunity to doze off. She actually slept for 30 minutes because she could. And it made total sense in the game. And it made it clear that these were eternal beings who can do whatever the heck they liked. So think about stuff like plot and setting. How do aristocratic cultists in the early century relax? What do warriors do between battles? How do the hobbits enjoy their snack even if the world is ending? And also the logistics and schedule. Does it make sense to force rest on people who hate sleep? Like in Harem Sunsat, where they had mandatory nap time. Is this some sort of activity where, where people can feel like they're active and in-game, but take a break from all the drama? Like helping out the in, the in the kitchen, like cutting carrots, it's brilliant because it's usually a huge help for the staff, but it also creates purpose for all those restless, wandering souls who just can't play, they just want to do something. So be smart. If you want safe and sane and creative participants who will help with the cleanup, you need to design for rest before, during, and after the game. And also, don't forget yourself. Schedule a nap. Thank you.